Hello, my name is Eric Phipps, and I'm with Junction Networks and OnSip.com. Today is August 17th, and we're going to be unboxing the Grandstream GXP1628, the phone with the most features in the GXP1600 line of phones. Though it is on the higher end of this series, it is limited in its feature set compared to other Grandstream devices, yet is still able to distinguish itself from the rest of the GXP1600 phones. It has two SIP lines, eight BLF keys, supports HD wideband audio codecs, has power over Ethernet, and a full deep duplex speaker phone. So let's go ahead and unbox it and take a look at it. It's not too heavy, everything seems like it's fairly well stably packed in here. We have the uh, quick installation guide. We have a U.S. patent notification. Let's see, what are we supposed to get in here? So we're supposed to have the phone itself, a handset, the power adapter, the quick installation guide and license, which we're looking at, the phone cord, the phone stand, the cable, and the BLF labels. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Standard advertisement for additional grand stream phones. Uh, the copyright notice and warranty disclaimer. You can see the phone itself is uh, pretty well packed in there and covered in the uh, protective plastic. It's all taped up here. So as you can see, it's got a uh, full screen protective there. It has the uh, BLF lines. Uh, it doesn't look like these are really super secured. Oh, no, here we go. There's a little divot here on the bottom. So you can actually just take that right off. Unfortunately, uh, these are pretty static. You're not going to have the ability to uh, change these on the fly. You're going to have to change the label. Uh, but luckily, it seems like they're going to give us some additional labels to go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set this aside for right now. Standard handset advertising that it does HD audio. That fits in fairly secure. Let's take a look at the case itself here. As you can see, we have the pretty standard uh, PC switch here so that if your desk only has one Ethernet port to connect to the LAN, uh, you're not going to have to worry about choosing a phone or a PC. Here we've got the LAN. Uh, here we've got the, uh, the DC 5 volt, which is pretty standard for grand stream phones. Uh, this phone does actually support power over Ethernet, so you don't even need this if your uh, phone is configured for it or if your network is configured for it. Here we have the uh, headset and then the uh, handset jacks, but we've got a cable for the uh, handset, so let's go ahead and dig out and see what's in the rest of this box here. Alright, so here we have our power adapter. Here we have our phone stand. What I really like about this phone stand is that depending on how you connect it to the back of the phone, you can use it for pretty simple wall mounting, such as This, so you can actually just sort of mount it onto the phone like that. Or if you are going to be using this specifically for desks, you have a couple of different options for connecting it like that. Or if you need it to be a little bit higher on, you can just use the taller bracket. But it's entirely up to you which way you want to go with that. Uh, it has an included Cat5 cable, so that's pretty convenient. It has the phone cord to connect the handset to the device. Let's go ahead and plug that in. to the handset. So pretty standard phone right there. Uh, nothing too exciting, nothing too surprising. Uh, the power supply. Uh, it's really in there tight. It's easier, probably just easier to rip the packaging off than to try and figure it out. Uh, twist ties, which are the bane of my existence, so I'm never very good with these. So I'll just cheat and slide it off like this. Sort that out later. All right, let's go ahead and power it up and see what we get. All right, and while that's powering up, let's go ahead and take a look at the power strips here. All 
All right, so it looks like it not only includes an additional uh, additional couple of uh, paper things, so you can label this up to three times. Uh, unfortunately, the back side does not also have the, uh, the color coding, so you can't just sort of switch that upside down to uh, try and create six labels. Uh, kind of unfortunately uh, missed a step there. Uh, however, it does contain a second one of the plastic protectors. Uh, let's see if, while this boots up, let's go ahead and take a look at this and see if it'll all fit on the same thing at the same time, or if you're going to have to hold on to these. I think you may have to hold on to these, unfortunately. Oops. You can just slide that in. It's got a little divot there so you can uh, pop it out easily. Uh, let's see here. The network says that the network is starting, but uh, because it's not actually plugged into anything, I don't anticipate that going anything. Yeah, as you can see, it, it hit network down. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the screen here real quick. So as you can see, um, I don't know how well this is going to turn up for you guys, um, but there are... It has, in addition to this like a uh, little smaller screen, it has a couple of uh, binary on-off settings here uh, that are going to reflect, you know, either this thing is on or it's off. Um, I don't know what we're going to get as far as the actual um, line one registration. Let's go ahead and hit next screen. Yeah, so as you can see, there's not a lot of information there because, again, we're not connected to uh, the network in any capacity here. All right. So let's see here. As you can see, the screen is pretty much just like the uh, other 1600s. It's uh, just got a few lines, um, but you can go ahead and uh, get into that, and it will do everything uh, as it should. So yeah, it's got a pretty decent screen, uh, considering the price. Uh, we did not pay a lot for this, uh, and uh, it's got a good responsiveness to the springs. Uh, everything feels good. It doesn't rattle or anything along those lines. Uh, the stand feels, you know, pretty stable there. I think that the table is shaking more than the actual phone itself. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's a pretty standard grand stream phone. Uh, I hope that this answers any sort of questions that you may have about the device. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to configure the phone and then we're going to run it through over 30 tests just to make sure that it works properly uh, with OnSIP and uh, our hosted PBX service. And we're going to test the uh, interoperability and we're going to test the sound quality. And then a full write-up will be available on www.onsip.com. All right. Thanks for watching, and I hope this may have answered any questions you have about what's in the box for the GXP1628.